The Lambda Annotations Framework is a programming model that makes it easier to build AWS Lambda functions using .NET. In previous videos, we learned how to use the Lambda Annotations Framework to build API endpoints. In this video, let's learn how we can use the Lambda Annotations Framework to integrate with other AWS services like S3, SQS, SNS, DynamoDB, etc. We will be using Amazon S3 as an example. However, the approach to integrate with the other AWS services remains the same. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos around .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my .NET on AWS series. If you're new to Annotations Framework, I highly recommend checking out my blog post and also the associated video which will be linked there in the descriptions below. In that, I'll show you the introduction to Annotations Framework, what are the different capabilities it provides and how to get started using it to build an API endpoint. I also have a few other blog posts which shows dependency injection as a feature and also how to build a CRUD API endpoint using Annotations Framework. The point of this video is to show how to integrate to other AWS services, especially S3, which I will be using in this example, using the Annotations Framework, and how it makes it easier to build Lambda functions using the Annotations Framework. So let's switch over to Visual Studio, and let's create a new project. Let's create a simple AWS Lambda project and click Next. And let's give this project a name. So let's give this as S3 Annotations sample and let's click create. So this prompts up to select a blueprint for the Lambda function. Since we will be integrating with Amazon S3, let's choose Amazon S3 as the example. So let's choose simple S3 function and click finish. Now this creates the default Lambda function template and it also has the boilerplate code to integrate with an S3 function. So let's go to the function.cs. Here you can see we are creating an S3 client inside the function constructor. And we also have the function handler with the S3 event as its input parameter. So this function handler can react to events that happens in Amazon S3. Now, if you're completely new to Amazon S3 and how to integrate with Lambda functions, I have a video which will be linked here and also in the descriptions below. So all this function is currently doing is on an S3 event, it gets the records that created the event, it reads through that and it gets the object's metadata and it logs that using the logger. So let's update this function to actually get the file content and write this into the logger. Now in your application, based on your business needs, this could process bulk data records or do image transformations or other processing that needs to happen on file-based systems whenever a file gets uploaded or changed in S3. So in this case, to get the actual file contents, let's replace the get object metadata async, the get object method. Now this is going to return the actual object from which we can read the file contents. So let's rename this as file and let's read the contents from here. So let's use a reader. Let's create a stream reader so that we can start reading from this stream. And let's use the file.response stream. So this is going to start reading from the file. And let's use the reader.read to end async. Now this is going to return as a string. And let's say where contents is equal to and await that. Now this is going to be a string that we have read from the file. So let's log this into the logger. Context.logger.log information, read file contents. Let's use string interpolation for file. And let's specify the S3 event dot object dot key. And also let's pass the contents with contents and let's pass in the contents. So now this function is going to read the file as soon as an S3 event is raised and write this into the CloudWatch logs. Now, if you scroll up to this functions constructor, you can see that the S3 client is getting instantiated within this constructor code itself. However, normally when building applications in .NET, we are used to using the dependency injection framework. Now the Lambda annotations framework provides out of the box capability to work with dependency injection. So let's see how we can modify this code using the annotations framework to set up dependency injection. To use the Lambda annotations framework, let's make sure to add a NuGet package. So let's search for Lambda annotations and let's add the amazon.lambda.annotations package. So let's click install and let's come back to the Lambda function and let's attribute this function with the Lambda function attribute, which is coming from the annotations framework. So let's make sure to include the right namespace 
and we have annotated this as a lambda function from the annotations framework. Now, once we have done that, we can create a startup class. So let's come to the solution explorer and create a new startup.cs class. Now this can be used for dependency injection. So let's make this as a public class and let's attribute this with the attribute lambda startup. This again is coming from the amazon.lambda.annotations. Now, once we have put the lambda startup attribute, we can add in a new function in here. So we can call this as public void configure services method. Now, this is very similar based on convention to the ASP.NET Core startup classes. So the configure services takes in an I service collection. So let's pass in a I service collection instance. Let's make sure to include the right type. So we'll have to install the package. So let's install the extensions dot dependency injection dot abstraction. So let's install that package from where we get the I service collection and let's name this as the services attribute. Now, once we have the service collection, we can use this to register the dependency injections. So let's specify services dot add AWS service method and let's pass in the actual service that we need to register. So in this case, we need to register the I Amazon S3. So the add AWS service is again coming from a NuGet package. So let's open the Explorer and right click and say manage NuGet packages. And let's add the appropriate NuGet package to the one we need is the AWS XDK dot extensions dot dot net core dot setup. So let's select that and install this into this project. Now, once we have that, let's switch back to startup.cs and this function now successfully compiles. So let's make sure to open close the parentheses and this registers the I Amazon S3 instance as an AWS service into the service collections. Now with this one line of code, we can now switch back to our functions.cs and replace this as a constructor injection. So we already have a constructor injected version in here, but this was mainly for testing purposes. So let's remove this comment and also let's remove the constructor without any parameters. Now this function is going to take in an I Amazon S3 instance and set it up as a instance and then use it inside the function handler. Now, if you want using the annotations framework, you can also inject the I Amazon S3 instance via the function handler. Now to do that, all you need to do is use the from service attribute following which you can pass in the I Amazon S3 and take in the Amazon S3 instance. Now, since the Lambda function attribute is here, the annotations framework knows that this from services needs to be resolved from the dependency injection container. I have a video that shows this in action in my dependency injection video for the annotations framework. For now, let's remove this and let's inject this using the constructor. Now with the annotations framework, as soon as I added the Lambda function attribute on this function, it also automatically created a new file. So let's explore the solution explorer. And here you can see there is a serverless dot template file. Now this is an automatically generated cloud formation template file, which helps us to deploy the Lambda function. Now here you can see there is an S3 Lambda annotations function handler generated code. So if you expand this, you can see the .NET Lambda function being set up inside this resources in this cloud formation template. Now we can use the same template to also add the additional resources. Now in this case, we need an S3 bucket. We need this Lambda function to have permissions to read from the S3 bucket. And we also need the S3 bucket to send triggers to the Lambda function. We can configure this right from this template file. So let me copy and paste the template that is required and then I will walk you through it. So let's collapse this and let's add in the template file that's required. Let me also add a parameter section which I use to define the bucket name. So here I'm using a default name for my bucket and I'm referring that parameter from within the S3 bucket creation. So here we have the bucket beginning created. So let's collapse that. And we are also setting up the S3 invoke Lambda permission on the Lambda function from this bucket. Now here I'm referring to the Lambda function as my Lambda function. However, the name that got generated defaultly was different. So if you want to fix that, you can either use this generated name inside the bucket name, or you can also specify the name that the generated code uses. So let's copy this. Let's come back to the function.cs. And inside the Lambda function attribute, we can specify the resource name attribute. So let's specify that and let's use my Lambda function as the resource name. So once we update the resource name and save this file and come back to the serverless.template, 
we can see that the function name is now updated. So you can collapse these resources and you can see we have the function name as my lambda function, which is the generated one in our case. So the invoke permission is now working as expected because it is referring to the lambda function using the ref attribute. So now this is able to set up the appropriate reference for this particular lambda function. So let's collapse this. And in the next case, I'm setting up a Lambda role, which is a new IAM role that gives this Lambda function the permission that's required to read the file from this S3 bucket. So in this case, I'm referring it to the bucket name, which is getting created. Now this role has a name, the Lambda role, which now needs to get applied for this Lambda function. So if you look at the my Lambda function, right now there is no role applied. We only have one policy, which is the basic execution role. So let's switch back to the function.cs and let's apply the role on this function. So we can specify the role and we can specify the role name. Now in this case, since the role is coming from the cloud formation template, I need to use at and specify lambda role. So now next time I save it and come back to the serverless.template, you can see here that the code is updated to refer the role from this particular serverless template. Now, when we created the S3 bucket, so if I expand that, this also has set up the notification configuration and the Lambda configuration for that. In this case, anytime an object is created under the folder test underscore with the suffix dot text, it then sends a notification to this Lambda function. So if we drop a file into this bucket that's getting generated in this following specifications, then we will receive a notification. Now you can use any rules and prefixes that requires based on your application. I have just set this up for an example. Now, once we have all of this set up, let's deploy this to our AWS infrastructure. So let's go to the solution explorer. Let's right click on the project and say publish to AWS Lambda. Now this prompts up to create a stack name and also an S3 bucket where it can temporarily upload this zip file and deploy to AWS. So let's specify a stack name. So let's specify S3 annotations sample and let's click publish. Now this is going to package our Lambda function, upload it to S3 and deploy it to AWS using the cloud formation template. The upload is done and we are creating the resources as specified in the template. The creation is complete and the deployment is successful. So let's switch over to our AWS console, navigate to stacks, and we can see the stack that was newly created. So here we have the S3 annotations sample and under resources, we have the different resources that we just created. So we have the bucket, the Lambda role, the my Lambda function, and also the permission to invoke the Lambda function. So let's navigate to the bucket and also to the Lambda function. Now inside the bucket, if we create a new folder, so let's say create folder and let's specify test. Now S3 by default doesn't have a folder concept. It's just that it's going to prefix the file name in a certain format so that it appears as a folder. If you're new to S3, I highly recommend checking out my video, which will be linked here and also in the descriptions below. So let's say create folder and it creates a new folder. Now inside this, let's upload a new file. So let me drag and drop that file in here. So there is a hello.txt file and let's click upload. Now this has uploaded the file into that S3 bucket under the test folder. So if I navigate over to my Lambda function and go into the monitor tab and let's look at the CloudWatch logs. Now this is going to open the appropriate CloudWatch logs for that Lambda function. Now we have one log stream record inside here. So let's navigate to that. And here you can see the log statement reading file content for the file test hello.txt with the content hello world. Now this was exactly the contents in the text file that I just uploaded. Now we are successfully able to wire up an S3 event notification to a Lambda function using the annotations framework. The annotations framework made it very easy for us to set up the dependency injection for this function using the constructor injection and also to deploy this particular Lambda function. So we use the serverless.template file to define all our resources and keep the rules for this Lambda function trigger in one place. Now you can use a build deploy pipeline to deploy this serverless template into your different environments. I have a video showing up on how to set up GitHub Actions on a CloudFormation template, which will be linked here and also in the descriptions below. So if we look at the generated code for this annotations framework, so let's right click on this project, navigate this in the file explorer. Let's go to the bin folder, the debug and .NET 6. 
So here we have this DLL that's generated, which is the S3 annotations sample dot DLL. So let's use dot peak, which is an assembly decompiler from JetBrains which can be used to see the contents inside this DLL. So let me drag and drop this DLL inside here. So let's drag drop this S3 annotations sample. Let's navigate into that. And here we can see there is the S3 annotations namespace. And here we have the function handler generated. This is the generated code that the annotations framework generates. So if I navigate into that, you can see the function code for that. So if we expand this, you can see the service collection is getting set up inside the wrapper generated code and it's wrapping up our actual function handler. Our actual function handler is getting registered as a singleton in the service collection. You can also see that this is creating the startup class and configuring the services using the method we defined on that. Now, once we have these instances created, you can see that the service provider is used to get the required service, which creates the instance for our actual function, and it calls the function handler on that. So this is how the annotations framework wraps around our actual function to provide these additional functionalities that we saw. We, it also automatically creates the serverless template, which makes deployment easier for us. I hope this helped you to understand how to use the Lambda annotations framework to integrate with other AWS services. Although the example that we chose here was to integrate with S3, the same concept and mechanisms apply to integrate with SQS, SNS, or any other AWS service. The annotations framework makes it easier to build Lambda functions using dependency injection and also by defining the serverless template where you can define all the resources that's required for the Lambda function. We can also set up and wire the different permissions and the event triggers on the Lambda function using the serverless template file. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please hit that subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.